Welcome back, friends, to our channel. Um, I wanted to take a brief few minutes and just go over some of the questions that we got from our uh, four videos that we did on our generator install, our standby generator. Uh, we had a lot of questions come through, um, a lot of people asking the same question, and I, I tried to respond to as many as I could, but we got a lot more than I was expecting. So we thank you guys for watching those videos, um, but I did want to address some of those things. And I didn't say it in the beginning of those videos, I had it down in the description. If you're not an electrician or if you don't understand electrical work, I have to say it, please don't try this at home. Um, it's sad I even have to say anything about that, but if you don't know what you're doing with electrical work, you can get yourself seriously injured or killed very easily, and it doesn't take much. Um, I've done electrical work for 12, 13 years, something like that, and uh, I've done some stupid stuff even knowing what I was doing, and you know, blow a screwdriver up in your face or, you know, arc flash explosions, they're no joke. And you can get yourself seriously hurt or killed. So if if you don't know anything about electric electricity, I do not recommend trying to tackle a generator because it's not a simple project. It's not as easy as it looks. So, and I want everybody to be safe too. So um, it's mainly for entertainment purposes only. Um, with that being said, let's jump into some of the questions. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. So I got a lot of questions on as far as the install, as far as um, not putting uh, no ox on my terminations. So most of the time in years past, uh, you were required to use an antioxidant compound like you can see here. Uh, that little gray goop that's uh, that's on the wires. So it's actually no longer required by the National Electrical Code. Um, wires, the aluminum wire is actually an aluminum alloy these days, and it does not oxidize like the old stuff. The old stuff would oxidize, and then over time, it would actually harden up as well and become real stiff and couldn't even work with it. Um, this here is actually an aluminum alloy. Now, they still sell the compound, some municipalities actually still require it. And I mean, it's not a bad idea either to, to use. Some people swear by it. Um, I've, I've used it and I've not used it and I've never had any issues either way. So I did not have any on hand for this job. And when I went to the hardware store and was getting some other things, they actually didn't have any in stock. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna not install my generator just because I don't have antioxidant. It's not that big of a deal to me, um, so that's why I didn't use it. So, like I say, some municipalities may still require it, but as far as the National Electrical Code, it does not require it anymore. On that subject, one thing I've never really understood is um, generally you, you don't ever, ever mix copper and aluminum. If you have uh, an aluminum feeder and a copper feeder you'll bring those and put a put them in a polaris tap and that's how you'll do a splice you never wire nut copper to aluminum however pretty much all like ground bars bus bars the parts of the breaker uh they're either i mean i'm pretty sure especially the ground bars for sure are uh aluminum um now the screws may not be aluminum, they may be like zinc covered or something like that, but I know for a fact that a lot of the lugs are made out of aluminum, but yet we put copper wires in them. So I'm guessing because the aluminum is an alloy of some sort, and I think the copper wire nowadays is probably some sort of alloy. Uh, maybe that's why there's no reaction. I don't know. I'd be interested in hearing uh, your thoughts on that. I actually want to show you this as well. So this is a piece of aluminum wire that I've had in my scrap pile for several years. I just went out there and dug in their ground. And you can see it's dirty from being on the ground, but it's, it is not oxidized at all. It's still nice and shiny. Um, and still looks with the exceptions of the dirt and leaves that were stuck to it. Uh, just as good as the day that it was bought. So I did want to show that as well. It's, uh, it's still in great shape even being out in the elements so the second question that i got asked quite a bit about 
and uh, saw several comments about was my chase. So I used a two and a half inch nipple. Um, ideally, uh, if you have a three inch hole saw or hole punch, I would go with a three inch for this, just be safe. I will say this though, this just using one chase, unless you have specific instructions from or, or permission from your inspector, your AHJ, um, this is not normally permitted. So what the way you would normally do this is come out of the bottom of the meter can with like a LB, a conduit body, and pipe over and up into the bottom of the transfer switch. That's the proper way to do it. That's for the utility power. And then your feeders coming out of here, going to the house, would come through this nipple. So I, my inspector allowed me to do it this way, um, but that's not always the case. So if you're looking to do it with only one thing, and I had my reasons for doing it this way, and I'll explain some of those in a few minutes. Um, but unless you get special permission, this is not accepted per code. Just wanted to clarify because you have fused and unfused conductors in the same raceway. So I did want to address that because that was confusing some people as well. Another question I was asked is, since this is rated for service, why did I need to have this panel? So when we built the house, I wanted a sub panel outside. Um, I did not want a meter main combo because basically the power comes straight from the meter into the panel. And then if you ever hook up a generator, the way that it's set up, whatever is fed on this outside panel cannot be ran off of the transfer switch unless you do a lot of rewiring, run these circuits from inside uh, the load center inside, or if you have a, a transfer panel with a uh, distribution set up where you've just got breakers, that sort of thing. So this is the setup I've always used and installed and I'm familiar with it. So this is the setup I went with. Um, I have my well, I have our swimming pool, I have a couple of outlets outside, and I'm going to have my barn all ran off of this uh, exterior panel. So I needed this and wanted this running off the generator as well. I'm going to have uh, some freezers out in the barn once we get animals uh, that I'm going to want to run off the generator. So I put this panel being fed off of here and then my inside panel is being fed from here as well so everything on this panel and my inside panel is being fed from the generator i had a few people uh comment and mention about safety uh, i am definitely concerned about safety when i work on stuff hot um fortunately for me this was not hot so when the power company came they pulled the meter out here and then he went out to the pole where my transformer is and he pulled the jack as well. Um, and then before I started work, I actually checked to make sure we were good to go and it was not hot anymore. Uh, so nothing was hot when I was working here. Um, the hot suit, I know several people mentioned hot suits. I don't own a hot suit because I do not do electrical work full time anymore. Um, I'm actually a, a home builder superintendent. So I kind of manage the proce uh, process of building homes and don't do full-time electrical work anymore. So um, I don't own a hot suit. I am familiar with them. I used to have to use them when I worked for the, the company I worked for that did commercial work. Um, when we were working in hospitals, some of the Zaxby's restaurants we wired, I, um, I wore hot suits then because um, I was in uh, 1,000 and 1,200 amp panels. And those, those bad boys will get you an arc flash quick. So um, that being said, I always try to work everything like it's hot. It's no different than if you were uh, working around wep weapons, you always presume they're loaded. Um, with electricity, you always work it like it's hot. It's the best way to do it. And then you don't have to worry about it. So I've worked stuff before and thought it was dead, only to find out when I hooked up the last wire and lights come on, <laughs> it was not dead. It was actually alive. So it's, uh, it's always a good idea to be safe when you work so um yeah so that's that i don't have a hot suit that's why i didn't wear one and there was no need to wear one in my opinion so another question we got was how come we didn't use plastic bushings on our pipes so inside here and on this side 
I didn't have any plastic bushings on the pipes and it is required. I believe in code it's anything an inch and a quarter and larger and in the wire size of, I believe it's number six and larger. I may be, I may be wrong on that, but it's something like that. You are supposed to have plastic bushings on the male adapters. Um, I went to three or four stores. I don't remember how many stores I went to. Nobody has plastic bushings right now where we live here in North Florida. Um, we do good to get breakers and meter cans and, and panels and such. Um, they, everything's so scarce right now with building. It's just unbelievable. So I went to, like, I think it went to four stores and could not find a plastic bushing in any of them. So um, that's why I don't have plastic bushings on those pipes. So I wasn't trying to get away with anything or do it wrong. I just couldn't find them. So as with the case, if you're in building, you know already, material shortages are a real thing why i don't know i've never heard a good reason why a lot of people say a lot of different reasons why none of them sound even close to legit to me but what do i know <laughs> so that's why i didn't use plastic bushings so lastly i had several uh comments on the gas install so this is one thing i am not familiar with at all the only thing i've ever used propane for is for a barbecue grill uh, my stove and my gas forge for doing blacksmithing. Um, but I would agree with the folks that commented, this doesn't look professional. Um, I don't know how it's supposed to look, but I'm pretty sure this is not how it's supposed to look. I mean, this looks janky at best. So I, uh, I have a, a friend that we work with that does gas I just I didn't have them come do it because they're so busy and I didn't want to take them away from the projects we have going at work so I got this other company not super happy with with how it turned out I always thought the flex was supposed to go over here going into the generator but like I say I don't know anything about it I just know I like neat and tidy and that doesn't look neat and tidy so well, I think that wraps up all of the major questions that we had and concerns. So I wanted to try to address those because I was, it was a full-time job trying to respond to I try to respond to all the comments uh, as best I can. Um, and those were some frequently asked questions. So I figured I'd make a video on it, just kind of address some of the questions and issues that people had. And I uh, hope it's, hope it clears some of that up. So um, greatly appreciate everyone watching our videos and supporting our channel and uh if you haven't already we'd love to have you uh be a subscriber if you consider hitting that subscribe button we would uh, greatly appreciate it thanks for watching and we will see you next time